Welcome to a video lecture on complex circuits. In this video, we will look at circuits that are composed of both parallel and series parts and how to break them down and solve for the individual part. So without further ado, here we go. Oh, this follows along in sections 20.8 and 20.10 in, in your textbook. Whenever we have circuits, and most circuits are actually wired partially in series and partially in parallel, um, it's important to figure out what the equivalent resistance is. Once you figure out the equivalent resistance, you can then go back and determine the current voltage um, and through each branch of the voltage drop across each device in order to find things like the power dissipated or anything else that the a question asks for, but or, or to understand the voltage drop over a certain device. So here's a, a little quick example. We have a 3 ohm resistor and then two 4 ohm resistors between points A and B. The equivalent of the two 4 ohm resistors, because they're in parallel with each other, we're going to do each branch of it. We're going to do the as much as we can from each part first. So we have the two 4 ohm resistors. Their equivalent is one 2 ohm resistor. When you add it up, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equals 1 half. That's 1 over the equivalent resistance. So there you go. There we have our equivalent resistance for that parallel branch. And then that, those are in series with the 3 ohm resistor. So that become, makes the, the resistance or the total resistance between points A and B is equal to 5 ohms. It's pretty straightforward. You just do each part as, as break it down to as simple steps as you can, deciding whether it's in parallel or in series, and go step by step. It's important after each step of simplifying a circuit to go back and, and to make sure you draw it. Because as you go, basically we're going to deconstruct the circuit down to its simplest form, and then you work back up to find out what the voltage and current is in each branch. Now, here we have one circuit. This first one, here we see that left, uh, excuse me, the right branch of uh, parallel is actually, there's two resistors there, so they're in, they're in series. We can combine those two. Their equivalent is 470 ohms. Then we combine the two branches in parallel. Their equivalent is one 130 ohm resistance. Now we have those other uh, two resistors, which are again in series now. So we can combine them via series, adding them together. The step-by-step -step aspect of this, and if you go through and draw it out and use those steps, will help you in the end when you have to go back and solve for certain things. Please take the extra time to draw it out. It will be helpful. Trust me. There are two main rules um, within circuits, and they're, they're called Kirchhoff's rules because, uh, well, he's discovered them, so he gets them named after him. Um, first, the uh, junction rule. This is also known as the current rule. Um, the total amount of current entering a junction is the total amount of current leaving the junction. So here we have 7 amps of current coming into this junction, and for whatever reason, because there's more resistance in the branch to the right than in the other branch, there uh, are 2 amps going to the right and 5 amps going continuing straight ahead. So in here, with this junction, the total leaving that junction is 7 amps, and the total entering is 7 amps. The current entering the junction is equal to the sum of the current leaving the junction. Second rule is that around any closed circuit loop, the sum of the potential drops is equal to the sum of the potential rises. This means that the potential provided by the battery, in this case 12, ohm, 12 volts, is equal to the individual potential drops across all the devices. Now, we have so we have 10 volts across the 5 ohm device and 2 volts across the 1 ohm device. Now, this may mean that uh, this is a simple series circuit. Or these, could, these individual circuits here could be the equivalent of things in parallel. So, for example, if the 1 ohm resistor was really the equivalent of two, um, 2 ohm resistors in a parallel circuit, a little parallel branch right there, that would mean that there is 2 volts across each branch. 
we'll see a little bit more of this and you should be already a little bit familiar with this idea in class. So here's this without further ado, big giant sample problem. Hello. Here we're going to look at a complex circuit, or in this case a very complex circuit, and how to go through the steps of simplifying it and figuring out the necessary voltage drops, uh, the power dissipated by each device, etc., etc. So, here we have our circuit. In case you can't see it, here are two 9-volt batteries with the positive terminal is directed upward here. Next we have an 8-ohm resistor here a junction that splits into two branches. In this first branch, we have one 2-ohm resistor and one 4-ohm resistor. Next, in the second branch, it splits again at another junction. We have a 3-ohm resistor and a 6-ohm resistor here. After that, after it recombines together, we have another 10-ohm resistor. So here is our circuit. What I want you to do is go through step by step, starting most logically, what you'll want to do is start here in the two parallel branches and find the equivalent resistance of each part. For example, let's focus on this section right here. Some terribly drawn resistors. But we, have, we know that their values are 3 ohms and 6 ohms. Let's do the equivalent of this part. So find the equivalent resistance. It's 1, because they're in parallel, 1 over R, and this I'll say R equivalent, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, et cetera, et cetera. So, what we have here to start, we have, and I'm trying to jump over here, one third plus one sixth, that equals to one over our, our equivalent resistance. And one third plus one sixth ends up at um, two sixths plus one sixth, three sixths, that's out, equals out to one half. So we know that our equivalent resistance of this section right here, this little parallel section, is equal to 2 ohms. So what I'd like you to do now is finish going through this circuit and get, you want to reduce it down to the simplest form possible. The simplest form is going to involve one resistor and one battery, or, or whatever the smallest amount of devices that you really can. And from then, we're going to work our way back up. All right, now that you've reduced it, and what I've done is I've shown here is what I've fu fully reduced it to. So we have the equivalent of an 18 volt battery and one 12 ohm resistor. And if you didn't go through the steps on your own, you're going to have a hard time finding out what I want you to solve for tonight's problem. So make sure, stop, go back, and do each part of finding the equivalent resistance, then catch up with this. Now, we have this, 18 volts, 12 ohms. We can find the current coming from the battery using um, Ohm's law. Current is equal to voltage over resistance. So the current in here coming from the battery or the power source here would be, if we do it out, 1.5 amps. 18 volts divided by 12 ohms gives us 1.5 amps. That means if we now look up here at our original circuit, that we have 1.5 amps coming out of the battery, going through this resistor, it then splits here, it comes down into this branch, it splits at this branch, comes back together down here, comes over here, comes down this branch, then recombines together, comes back, and we have 1.5 um, amps of current going back into the battery. It's important to understand that this total amount of current leaving the battery is going to be the same coming back. The total amount of current entering this junction here 
is going to be the same leaving via each branch. So if we have 1.5 amps coming here, we're going to have 1.5 amps going down, the, or a combination, excuse me, a combination of 1.5 amps in each one of these branches. It's your job to figure out how to do that. Now, the way to go about doing that is you need to first figure out the voltage across each branch. You can figure out the remaining voltage by understanding by, that by the time the charge comes back to the battery, all the energy must be used. This is what voltage is energy per charge. So all this energy as it goes through the circuit must be used up by the time it comes back to the battery. Now if we know that we have 1.5 amps going through here, we can rearrange this to solve for the voltage drop across this one uh, across this 8 amp uh, 8 ohm, excuse me, resistor here. So we'd have 12 volts across there. That would leave a certain amount of voltage to go across these other two branches here. That's for you to figure out tonight. Your homework tonight or the, the check question for this is I want you to tell me what is the power dissipated by this 4 ohm resistor and the 6 ohm resistor. That's correct. I want power dissipated by the 4 ohm resistor and the 6 ohm resistor. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Make sure to put your answers in online.